All right, Pete, what do you got for sports for us? Well, I thought we'd kind of look at what are some of the best looking games for this weekend, John, because the, the, when I say this weekend, it starts tonight and we start off with Dallas going up to the Meadowlands to play up against the Giants. Now, two teams in the same division, kind of struggling. They're one and two, and one of them's going to finish up this week at one and three, and the other will be back to 500. It's just a matter of who is it. I mean, Dallas is a team that everybody kind of expected. Well, you know, they've got the quarterback. They've got C.D. Lamb. They've got, you know, receivers. They've got the defense that everybody has been talking about. They've got Michael Parsons. They've got all these guys, right? I mean, so why are they not at least 2-1, and maybe even undefeated at 3-0? and Well, they haven't really played all that well, especially on defense. And that's the part that's a little bit surprising. I think Dak has actually started off pretty well. But the defense has not, and I think that's one of the problems. So that one, I think, is a very interesting game. Not that the Giants are great, but every once in a while, Daniel Jones actually looks like an NFL quarterback. Not a lot, not every week, but (laughs) once in a while. And if if he steps in and he plays like an NFL quarterback, that might be a very difficult game for Dallas again because the defense, like I say, has been a little bit soft. So – I think that's an interesting game, but I think the game of the weekend, for me at least, is the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers. And the reason I say that is not not because I'm in Minnesota. It's because this is a really interesting game. We've got a quarterback that nobody, including me, thought could do the job that he's done so far in these first three weeks. He's done a great job. He's probably ranked right now as one of the better quarterbacks. And some guys are talking about, hey, this guy – is, is at an elite level. Now, I don't know how elite it is. It's only three games. We'll find out. But then you look at the Vikings, and they've got Aaron Jones, a running back, John. He is the leader of the team right now. And where did he come from? Green Bay Packers. He'd been there for, a, I think, the better part of six or seven years, something like that. He comes here, and he's been electric, and he's talking about how he wants to do a Lambo leap and everything when he gets back down there, wants to get a touchdown. This could be, I think, a really pivotal game as well because when you look at the Vikings and what they bring to the table right now, it's a pretty good football team that I don't know how many people out there thought they'd be undefeated, Uh, but I think this is a pretty interesting game in Green Bay. Which quarterback's going to play? Which one's the better quarterback right now? And I don't mean that to to say anything bad about Jordan Love, but – Malik goes in there, and they didn't drop a thing. And as a matter of fact, John, he's been running the ball really, really well, along with throwing the football for the Packers. He's made that offense a little bit more difficult because of the fact that he has that escape quality and he can run with the football. So I think um, if they decide to stick with him one more week, not get Jordan Love hurt, it could be pretty interesting just to see what this quarterback can do against the Minnesota Viking defense. Well, I'm going to start with the first game you mentioned, Pete, that's tonight. Um, The Cowboys are going to win it. And why are they going to win it? Well, because if you needed a cure for a defense that's struggling, it's (laughs) Daniel Jones and the Giants. Um, Because, Pete, they have scored a total in three games of 45 points. Now, I know know some of you can't do math, but I'll help you. Uh, That's 15 points a game. You don't win football games. Um, it's amazing that that they're one and two. They should be zero and three. But yeah. it's amazing because fifteen points a game doesn't get it done, Pete. So yeah. this game's tailor made for Dallas, except that it's on the road. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll grant you that. But other than that, this is a game that they really should win, Pete, mm-hmm. and should win. You know, maybe even going away, especially if they played like they were supposed to. Yeah. As far as the Vikings and uh, Packers, I agree. That's one of the top games to watch. Some people will be watching to see if, uh, you know, Taylor Swift shows up at Travis Kelsey's games and things like that. I'll be watching to see if Sam Darnold continues to develop into a superstar. Mm-hmm. Because honestly, Pete, he goes to 4-0 and against the Packers, and you're going to hear people starting to say, yeah, no wonder the, the Jets gave up on this guy. No wonder the Jets suck because <laughs> it wasn't his fault. It was the Jets' fault. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not trying to put, you know, too much pressure on them, Pete, but my my gosh, Salah hasn't developed too many players there. And no. instead, this guy comes to the Vikings and he looks like, you know, like he should have been the number one pick, not just the Jets' number one pick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. 
What's yeah. your next story? Next one I got for you, John, is this. So NCAA football, what's the best game of the week? It's got to be. It has to be Alabama going up against Georgia. But on top of that, how about – how about the fact of how many guys, I mean, we got a, 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 two guys here that potentially are Heisman Trophy winners. Now, so far, the numbers aren't going to explode for you and, and put you, you know, hey, this guy's the most unbelievable guy yet. But I'll tell you what, Jalen Milrow from Alabama, he's got eight touchdowns, zero interceptions. There is something to be said for the accuracy of these college quarterbacks when, you, when you're not throwing picks. It's one thing to be up there and go, well, he's got 10 touchdowns, but he's got six picks. That's not that's not that's not going to help. Those those turnovers bite you every time. And there's a good reason why these two football teams are who they are. They have players that understand that. I think Carson Beck also at seven touchdowns and zero interceptions, John. They're beat up on defense, but the Georgia Alabama game, that will be a fun game and I think it gives you a little bit of an opportunity when they're going head to head like that and Georgia Maybe if they're beat up on defense, maybe Milrow can show a little something more because I think that puts those guys both in the Heisman. You know, people are talking about various names. Those two names, I think, do still stand out. But I got a name for you that I, outside of that game, John. How about Boise State? There's a running back named Ashton Gentry, okay? okay? We don't talk about Boise State or teams like that very often, but the Mountain West, there are a lot of them are considering being a part of the Pac-12. So they're one of them, and I don't know if they're going to take that or not. UNLV's talked about it as well. A lot of guys, some are going to stay, some are not. But I will tell you this. The kid averages almost 11 yards a carry, John. And last year, he did the same thing. I mean, he averaged, last year he averaged something close to, he was number 11 in the country as far as yards, but he was averaging like six and a half yards a carry. Now he's averaging 11. And he's not just playing the, the teams that you and I would expect. Well, that really doesn't matter. He actually had a game against Oregon, right? <laughs> Boise State plays Oregon. They played him to a 37-34 game. They lost it to Oregon. Oregon ended up with the victory. Oregon's number seven in the country and probably rising as we speak. But let me tell you, 25 carries and 192 yards, that's 7.7 .7 yards a carry, three touchdowns. I would say that this kid who's already got, I think he's close to like eight or nine touchdowns for the year. This guy's a freak show and he's worth watching. And that's another, that's a quiet sort of a, is the Heisman willing to go that far or not? I don't know, but this guy's deserving because this is year two of him lighting it up no matter who he plays against. Well, he is a phenomenal player, Pete. And I've only seen tape on him. I've not uh, been there uh, for a whole game to watch him. I've only seen highlights. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a lot of highlights, quite yeah. frankly. Pete's right. Um, let me tell you this, Pete. Uh, I think that uh, when you asked me, okay, well, Heisman, who you got? Mm. I guarantee nobody had the quarterback from Miami. Right. And you know what, Pete? He's odds on favored right now. Mm -hmm. um, now, I'm not saying he's going to win it, but I'm saying Cameron Ward is looking pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. The guy that uh, and I'll do just like Pete does when he picks Minnesota Vikings for everything. I'm going to pick Colorado Buffaloes and say, if the Heisman was truly awarded, Pete, not just to the running back or quarterback, which are, you know, 99% of winners, yeah. I think it should be Travis Hunter. Yeah. Because Travis Hunter, all he does is beat people. He beat them. Uh, he got them into the uh, overtime against Baylor. Um, by coming back and grabbing that pass when uh, Shadur Sanders chucked it up at the end of the game uh, that would have been the end of the game, ended up taking him to overtime. But um, that kid plays 90 plays a game. Yeah. There is not a Division I player that plays 90 plays a game except this guy. And we're talking high level at both positions, Pete, D-back and uh, wide receiver. So if there were... Uh, people that were voting for Heisman, and who knows? I know they've got a bad loss to Nebraska on the books, but if they can start winning some more games here against good football teams like Baylor, because uh, I think that is a good football team, and he puts up the numbers on offense and maybe gets interceptions and so forth on defense, I don't know how you overlook Travis Hunter. I'm just going to say that. Yeah, he, des he, he deserves a lot of long looks, John. I don't disagree with you at all. As a matter of fact, there's only one other guy that has a resume like him, and that's 
a defensive back slash running back receiver at Utah who does something very similar and has been pretty magical himself, but not not the same as, as Hunter. But Hunter Hunter's special. There's no doubt about that. I mean, the fact that he plays the number of plays, as you mentioned, it's almost uh, scary that he's playing that much. I mean, is this going to wear this guy down by the time he finally gets to the NFL? I mean, you know, it, he's playing basically two games every week when he plays. So that's amazing to run that many plays. But I think it's exciting. It's always kind of fun to see early on who would, who would likely be the best player to maybe win the Heisman. But it's going to take a while. There's a, It's a long season. We're only three, four weeks into it. So it should be a lot of fun to watch these. But I'll tell you, Alabama, Georgia this time of year, that's a heck of a football game.